minute that you can articulate somebody's problem better than they can articulate it to themselves, you win them. You win them right away. And that's where I start is like, what is the biggest pain point that is on somebody's mind at all times that we can solve for them and that we can express better than they could express themselves? You'll win. What about when you're selling something that the customer doesn't even realize they need? Then you can start with something that they think they need and then give them what they want. For example, 1 million followers. So I hook people in with 1 million followers in 30 days because that's what they feel like they, they need, but it's not. It's what they want. They want followers, but what they need is a fundamental understanding of how to test content, how to learn from your audience, how to construct content. Because without that, you will not be successful. Some people come to me with an e-commerce business, for example, or they're like, I need to generate revenue right now. And I say, okay, we're not going to focus on followers. We're going to focus on how do we generate immediate revenue, get that engine running, and then we can reinvest into followers. So again, it's like, I completely understand where you're coming from. We work with clients like that all the time is, okay, the, 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 per, the customer may not know they need this, but what do they think they need and how can we use that as an anchor or a lead in to give them what they really need to be successful? Interesting. And you've been doing this for 15 years, you say? Yeah. So for 15, you don't look very old. How 40. old are you? 40? Yeah. So at 25, how, what were you doing before that? I was going to creating internet companies in school. Uh, so, I mean, you, if you want to go back to that, maybe 20 years, but I don't really consider that because you're still getting your feet under you and like piecing things together. But I think my first real experience it started like 15 years ago yeah but you, the reason i ask is you seem like an intense dude yeah not only that but that's the intensity comes from being real and when i say real there's a lot of people out there that are you know they're real but they're not necessarily real real meaning oh that dude knows his shit oh that guy knows his shit like there's those people out there they're like dude those guys are real yeah I, I think you're one of them just sensing you i just why I just you have an intensity it. I get intense because I'm passionate about it. And you're sure, you're certain. Yeah, because I, kn- I definitively know that if I don't have the answer right now, I can go out and find it tomorrow. Yeah. Because we know how to test. We know how to find and collect data and information and process all of this. And how long does it take normally? If I, hire, if, if I hired you for Lightspeed right now, when would the hook point be developed? Typically. Barring your schedule. Typically, it's done in the first 90 minutes. Of what? Paying of you? The strategy session. And then bam, there's there's a hook point. Typically in then, the first 90 minutes. Then how do you help them develop the story? Well, we start with the hook and then we, we work with the founder or with the business to develop the story. Now, we don't typically develop the story for them. We listen to them and we find the story within what they tell us. But you give them the story. Yeah, we work with them on that. Yeah, because again, I mean... It's harder than it sounds, I think. Even though well, I, I'm hearing you and so are everyone listening, they're like, okay, I need to I need to find my hook and then I need to f- develop my story. I know what my story is. Yeah, but it's not that easy. It's almost like you have to almost interview and, and, and collaborate to get it out of the individual. It's funny because I, I have a good friend that's probably one of the top creative directors in the world. He's worked for Nike and Adidas and all these companies. And he told me something and I think, I don't know if he came up with that or somebody else, but it, it's, it's so true. And I relay it to everybody. The process is simple. I can teach you the process, but it's not necessarily easy. It's like he breaks down running um, an Ironman or those Ironman competitions. It's simple. You bike X number of miles, you run X number of miles, you swim num- X number of miles. But does that mean it's easy? No, it's not. And the same thing with hook. It's like I could, the process is simple. But it's not necessarily easy to, to do yeah. it and come up with it. But I know you need to do it, folks. I know you need to do it. If you're listening to me, man, if I influence you at all, the answer would be, dude, can you afford this guy? Or try it on your own a couple times. See if you can do it. Because I think there's probably people like moi that fancy themselves creative, fancy themselves intelligent, and 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 
with a little bit of guidance can could actually probably nail nail a few of these not 15 years worth but again i'm listening i'm thinking okay what's my hook point because to me like for example light speed they do two things trains people and makes money so like i can show you how to take all of this virtualize it and make more than you're making yourself how do i know because i've been doing it 20 years that's what i do to make millions of dollars then on the other uh, side we help people train people better right you, you're not getting the result from training because you're not training. Most companies don't know that. They're exposing. They're not training. Okay, training requires four things. If you're not delivering those four things, you're not training, you're exposing. And that's what most companies, believe it or not, fail to understand. They think they have training programs when they don't. So those two things is what I'm doing. A hook, for example, for the train your people. I'm thinking, boom, they're scrolling. They see two people getting ready to fist fight in an office, right? Because that gets people to stop. It does. Fights. I guarantee it does. So I'm scrolling. Ooh, it looks like one of those fight videos. I'm going to stop, especially if there's a clever headline and some good copy. Now I'm going to stop. Are your employees acting like this? Is that because bing, 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 and you engage them? Is that the story? The hook was the fight. The story is now your message. Like, well, dude, do you, are your employees acting like a bunch of freaking Neanderthals? Are you losing customers because your turnover is so high? Have you ever wondered why your turnover is so high? Your, your training. Well, you, well, what, what's wrong with our training? Aha, that's why your turnover is so high. People quit because they're not making money. People quit because they're not successful. There's reasons people quit. Why is everyone quitting your business? You know, I don't know if you know this or not. Bing, bing, bing. And so that's the story or that's the, the message. So the hook was the fight. That's the story. And then it's believable with passion and delivering it correctly because, dude, I'll argue with anybody over those topics. Why? Because I know them as well as you know what you're talking about. So if I did that, is that a hook and a story? And boom, where does it go from there? It's a hook. I don't know if the hook would work. Your story is strong. And your story started when you first went about, I, you know, this is our business. We help people make money. We help them monetize their books and things of that. That is your story, but it's not your hook because there's so many other people in the market that are talking about that. But like a hook that I just came to mind as you're talking about my books is you literally, I, I think we did research. There's probably, and I may be completely off on this number, but I believe the number of self-published books per year is like five or six million a year. So literally I can see an ad in my head where you hold up a book and he says, you have this, but I can turn it into this. And then you turn it into like a million dollar check or something or have some visual effect because so few people talk about what books people think they make money off of books, off of selling books. You, you don't make a dime unless you get a huge advance, but that's, there's a huge audience of 6 million people a year that are turning, trying to figure out what to do with this and how to turn it into money. So that's like that visual exercise of like a visual effects of, I can teach you how to do turn this into this. And that's your first three seconds in less than, 30 days or 15 days or 10 days, like something like that. A fight can work. My only concern is all of the social platforms are against violence. So the minute they think there's a fight, even if there's not a real fight, you could get banned in the, your ads can get shut down or get banned in, in some way. What do you mean? They're filled with violence. Ads aren't. Oh, ads. Yeah. Organic. Paid ads. Because, dude, you know what I was saying? I was talking to my team earlier, and I'm like, you know what I think the future of ads are? Where they're not ads. Well, that's a good ad. Yeah, but that's the, but to me, it's like, because sometimes I'm talking to someone like right now, this footage right here, when I explained who we are, what we do, they could take that and go make an ad where someone watches me talking to you, which is content, but they're being sold based on my passion and the words that I use that's actually to... We're having a conversation. This isn't an ad, but boom, right now it could be doing, t -t 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 and this was used for an ad. And I think that's the future of ads where you're not being sold. You're, you're witnessing why you need the product. Yeah. And people make this mistake all the time when they think about ads, they think that my only job is to create something that says buy this. Yeah. That doesn't really work. Like, well, especially and it's, in today's, and it's in the noise. Yeah. It, it gets lost in the noise, but like one tactic 
uh, that we use and some of our friends use for the biggest brands in the world is they'll create like a hero video. Like one of my friends that's featured in the 1 million followers book is the chief strategy officer of a company called shareability that builds viral videos for the top brands in the world. And they did a campaign for cricket wireless with John Cena. So the first two videos were about John Cena. One was there was a big backdrop and fans would talk about how much they love John Cena. And then he would burst out through and surprise the fans. And then the second one is fans surprised John Cena with the, their emotional uh, letters to him about how he impacted their lives. Didn't sell anything about cricket wireless. You could see the logo, but it was more about, I'm going to entertain, I'm going to engage you. And then off the back end, they would remarket to all the people that watched the video with John Cena saying, hey, thanks so much for checking out my video. Really appreciate it. Why don't you go check out Cricket Wireless? So what happened? They earned the right to advertise to those people by giving them something of value, entertaining them, engaging them. So to your point is if we took this conversation and we turned it into a paid ad, we're not selling anything, but we're getting a million, 10 million, 15 million people to watch it. And then we can go back and retarget and say, well, why don't you go check out Brad's new clothing line? Or why don't you go check out Lightspeed Ventures and learn more about that? And it's one of the things that are overlooked about marketing is everybody's just focused so intently on the sale versus first earning the right to make the pitch or make the sell first and then go into the more direct response side of things.